a lot you'll notice as you go through these is that to go down through them. A lot of people don't do any of this. But how easy it is to get found in YouTube in search. If you put in here veterans issues and you started putting some good paragraphs and then you started talking about, you know, the problems you've done and that kind of thing, you bring people in like I don't know, I'm not exactly sure what you'd search on and people would separate veterans from general stomach pain. Um, but this descriptive area can be filled with copy. You can put tons and tons and tons. All of this gets brought over to Google. I'm just going to try something here. Bruce, we, we're typing in veterans with unexplained symptoms. Okay. Or veterans maybe... unexplained symptoms. Let's see what pops up when okay. we do that. Okay, veterans... Veterans, veterans with explain symptoms. Symptoms. In, in YouTube, right? Yeah, YouTube. Okay, so look at Gulf, Gulf War Syndrome, um, Gastrointestinal Center, um, Fight for Hope panel discussion. I'm just going to try Gulf War symptom, Syndrome here. Oh, maybe I spelled it wrong. Yeah. Spelling helps. All right, so I got, I see Gulf War Syndrome is number one. I see Michael Mashad passes amendment to defense funding. I see gastrointestinal center. Um, so I think you could compete pretty well in this market. I'm just going to go to gastrointestinal yeah, center. Let's see what that is. Studies have established a strong link between his. All right, go to the one that says gastrointestinal center. This is a really good example. So did you go to the gastrointestinal center? Gastrointestinal center. Yeah. Web address, look at the, co the amount of copy they put in their description box. Is it cancer or center? Uh, it's the third one down. Oh, cancer. Cancer, you're right. Cancer. Gastrointestinal cancer. So I have a live web link. I have paragraphs of text. So I'm just going to take wow. that. I'm going to Lots take, of text. Yeah, I'm going to take that phrase. Let me try something here. I'm going to take that phrase over to Google and just put it in Google for a moment. The same phrase that we searched on. Gastrointestinal cancer? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Veterans with unexplained symptoms. Got it, got it. It's interesting that gastrointestinal cancer would come up on that search because. Uh, GI issues are part of the complex of un unexplained symptoms, but not specifically cancer. Right but for some reason, the cancer video pulled up right. with Gulf War Syndrome. Well, what would cause that? Well, one of the things you're going to have to figure out, and this is sort of the, the messiness and the wild westness of the web, is things get linked together in all different ways. And mm -hmm. it's a machine that's trying to figure out what it is you want. So it gets, tries to get as close as it can, you know, using algorithms and the Google engines and all this stuff to try to figure out. The same thing happens with people. People start to search in through many different directions. They don't really know, I have a pain in my stomach, what that means. So these two things play into each other. And, and what I usually say to people is um, on blogs, which is a great place to sort of have because it's so flexible and you can add things and change things so quickly, is go wide with your topic. Put don't just be really don't be narrowly focused on your topic, but branch out from it. At least with blog posts, it's a process of discovery. You're trying to figure out just like this. For you who know, no, this might not have anything to do with it. To me who doesn't know, this is part of my path of getting to you. So you have to sort of be in a lot of different paths. You have to be in a lot of places. And you kind of figure out and you write about different topics. So one of the things in the video that I'm putting together right now that I was thinking about doing is having a sequence or just a, a clip of uh, scanning down the cluster of symptoms my brother had on one of his medical records, okay? So now if I then put those, that list into the, yeah, that would pull it up. That's right. That's right. I, yeah, and put that list in the description box because remember it's the words that Google looks for. Google is transcribing all videos now and it tried, you'll see the little CC closed caption thing 
If it can figure it out, it does it automatically. Every video that's loaded up is transcribed. And they use, they use um, like DragonSpeak, any of you familiar with DragonSpeak, the voice recognition technology is applied to all video now. So Google is using the words in the video that, you know, to try to help people get to the video. But you can really enhance it if you actually give them the words in the description box. Another key thing about video and YouTube is most people only look at the first 8 to 18 to 20 seconds of a video. If you look at your, and Google, and in the little handout that I have, we talk about Google, in, uh, YouTube insights, you can go in and look at all your video stats. They only look at the first few seconds. So you want to make sure that your key information is in those first 18 seconds. So just like a news story, the first sentence, you could chop off an entire news story except for the first sentence, you know and understand the entire news story, then the first paragraph, I mean Bill can, Bill's probably nodding over there, he knows this, um, you know, then the first paragraph, and if you're editing a news story, you just start chopping off the bottom of it because it's written in a way to chop off the bottom. The same thing happens with video. Put your key information in those first few seconds and then expand it out. So that if they only watch the first 18 seconds, they got it. And maybe there's a thing, there's a lower third that has a web address or, or something, but you got the whole message. You, know, I don't need to, you don't necessarily have to go and redo all your videos around just trying to be a marketing video, but, but understand that most people don't watch them very long. And so, you know, two or three minutes, if your video is really good, like the one on veterans issues or Alzheimer's, people watching those may be really focused and they're going to watch it to the end. But most videos... You know, if they can't figure it out right away, they're gone. Same thing with a website. Bruce, I think I want to a question here. Sorry for interrupting. Nope, no, I stepped on you. So, um, in, in my situation where I'm looking to target certain groups, I want, uh, I'm interested in issues of sustainability. Are, so I want to target that kind of information. When I, if I have a blog, is it going to be, are you saying I should have a YouTube channel or do I post videos on my blog and how much like proportionately how much do I need to be blogging about I mean how much do I need to be writing should this be a daily thing what well, how would you what recommendation would you make for me as a videographer or wanting to focus on on not the writing but on the so you want to have both you want to have a YouTube channel that you put videos on and you kind of that's your main home for videos as once you complete a video you then can put that on your blog your blog is your sort of your main generally I think would be your main home that's where people that's where you would put the most information and you'd spend most of your time it's an active channel the YouTube is kind of a passive channel you're gonna load them up there you're gonna code them but you're really waiting for somebody to kind of stumble across it but you want to put the video, which is easy, just take up the, the embed code and drop it into your blog. On blogging, what there's a lot of different things about it, but generally, if you had to sort of sum it up and quickly, is blog on some kind of a continual basis. It doesn't have to, if you can generate every day, good luck to you. But, you know, once a week, just a continual thing. You just don't want to leave it sort of lay blank for six months. Now, that doesn't mean you have to create original content once a week. Your blog can be, and you and you use like Google Reader if you're familiar with that, or whatever such places that like sustainable issues. There's lots of newsletters, so you can and feed those. So today I found something on you know SaveTheTrees.com. Boom. Today I found something else on you know light bulbs are great. You know fluorescent light bulbs are great. You can just say here's a great little article on on using fluorescent light bulbs in your house. You didn't do anything. You just sort of copied and pasted a link. Maybe you find a picture. Maybe you find another video. You can kind of build your world when you don't have anything to write about. Um, an editorial calendar is extremely helpful to sort of lay out some topics. Um, also remember, you don't have to write huge posts. Like if you lose this, the text from this gastrointestinal cancer, that might be four posts. That might be four weeks. You sort of put up a piece, and then you put up another piece. Think of how you can chunk stuff up just to give yourself content. Um, you might put up a resource list. You know, you might put something that has nothing to do with it. You might go, you went to a festival today and take some pictures from the festival. But each one of those posts, you 
on Twitter. Take that same link, throw it on your Facebook page. Um, you know, back and forth. Um, so if it's overpowering to you, you're never going to do it. But if you can break it into small pieces and kind of do it on a continual basis so people might come along um, and then maybe give some other resources like a, you know, a resource page. You can put you know, all those kinds of things in there. So does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a, a quick question. I, they, this is a little, if you are uh, you're a person um, uh, and you've got a Facebook page and you've got a uh, website like a veterans rights organization and uh, but you also have a lot of other personal interests. There seems to be, you know, something, a lot of times in life we try to be consistent, right? I am it you want the message of the website to be consistent with the message of Facebook. But Facebook's about you as a whole person. And the Sergeant Sullivan Center thing is about better rights. So there's not going to be. So how? So I, I how, feel... I deal with this issue all the time because I'm like you. I have many, many interests. I have a business interest and personal. So what you could do is you can set up a Facebook fan page just for the, the Sergeant Sullivan Center. That that There are two kinds of Facebook pages. There's the personal page that they really just want you to be sort of personal and non-salesy. And then there are the fan or places page where you can be as salesy as you want. So the Sergeant Sullivan Center, you can go into Facebook, they're all free, you just need the, the original account. You can set up a fan, I like, the, I like the word fan page better, but they change it to places page. Um, you can set up one just for that center. So on there, you can be all Sergeant Sullivan, boom. You know, whatever you put on your, your blog, you can stick on there. You can be salesy and everybody want. The way I treat my Facebook page is I cross somewhere between professional and friends, and I will sort of hint at the professional stuff without being by my stuff. I'll do, I just went to a conference. You know, I do it sort of from the third person. I kind of talk about things that I do. You know, I just came back from a client. I'm going to a client meeting today on, because a lot of my clients are in my Facebook page. There's a real mixing. All these things are mixed together. Yeah, that, that, I think that that's what I need. I needed to figure out. Basically, the, 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 to create a separate Facebook page to deal with. I can pull people from the friends list and say, hey, become a fan of this. But then I can start putting the, that stuff, the Sullivan Center stuff, on that fan page. And when something funny happens or whatever and I want to share, I can keep that on the personal. Right, so. right. I went to a conference, a veterans conference on issues, and I had a fabulous time, and I did something, and, you know, or I... You know, that kind of thing, you'll be on the personal page, but then you may go into much more depth detail on the Sergeant Sullivan page, which is just really focused on the center and trying to, it's really, I find it's really hard to get people to come to those fan pages if you're this kind of a business. Like, they seem to work really well if you are a yoga studio, a restaurant, a coffee shop, things where people come back all the time. And they're checking, is there an open slot to do a class or th that kind of stuff. Um, or you have a lot of money to promote people through with coupons and things. You know, you're, you're a Honda and you can just send people there. Um, but for a lot of this stuff, it's very, I find it very hard to get anybody to care about my graphic design business on Facebook. You know, I have 25 people. They just don't. It takes me months to get anybody to do anything. So I don't worry about it a whole lot. But I think in your case, you know, all of those are searchable too. So there's... You know, the, one of the things that's really interesting to look at is the average website is like 10 seconds. The viewers, it's really short. Average Facebook is about an hour a day. For everybody, half of all Facebook users go into Facebook every single day, and their time is around an hour. So, you know, you're in a community of people. Your issues are probably w are way more important than what I'm doing in graphic design or video. You know, I, you're trying to still help veterans. So... You have much more focus, but people are using that folk, the search stuff a lot in Facebook. They're spending a lot of time there. So for you, it probably might be a really good... You just have to experiment and see what happens and yeah. if you can grab people and pull them in. Yeah. 